Hi guys welcome to this perp heads basic basing tutorial with tips. This guide will show basic things that can be implemented to any base to up your chances of winning in survival. First things first we have to buy a property. To do this we should go to the bank in the city district, here's two ways how to get here. When you talk to the NPC you can see a list of properties that are available. All properties have varying prices, the more expensive ones usually are bigger and have more space for chemical tables and workbenches. For this video we will use Slums 3 as an example. To find your bought property open the Maps app on your phone and find your place. Let's talk about the advantages that we get from building a base. You build base defenses to have more protection in your property in case you get raided. Having defenses will up your chances of survival and will hopefully keep the drugs out of the hands of the raiders. To actually build base defenses for your property you will need certain items. Some items can be bought and some can be both crafted and bought. To buy certain defense items you should go to safety first. It's the place across the road from bank where you bought the property. Items like wooden and metal fences have to be crafted, the items required for the craft can be bought from the store around the corner. The most important things to buy are thin concrete barriers, spotlights and metal detectors. You can actually craft these items too but I suggest just buying them because they are not too expensive. You can also buy bandages and splints here, even though these medical supplies are cheaper to craft or buy them from other players at Bazaar. You can buy life alerts, smoke detectors, house alarms and car security here too or at Ragnatech near the casino. Also don't forget to have a smartphone on you. These are needed to make possible 911 calls or for use of the map and get notifications. Smartphones can be bought at gas stations or at Ragnatech store. To get to Ragnatech without a car follow this route. Now we are moving to slums 3, if you are planning on partaking in illegal activities like earning money with drugs. I'd strongly advise to board up your windows. I suggest using these wooden fences for it. These have to be crafted using a workbench or bought from other players. You board up the windows so cops or other players don't see the illegal stuff inside. If cops see it, they have a reason to raid you. Be sure to leave no gaps when boarding up the windows. Gaps can result in your drugs getting spotted. It is also smart to equip a life alert. This will ensure that when you die during a raid the cops get notified of where you died so the raiders might get killed by them. Do note that life alarms are expensive and not mandatory. This is the point of view from the cops when a life alert goes off. A good thing to do is place a metal detector at your front door, this will make a beeping sound when someone with a weapon passes through it. So if you're not paying attention, this will notify you. You can also install a smoke detector and house alarm on your property. You can place them on any door of the property, placing on the front door is not necessary. A smoke alarm gives a message to the fire brigade when there's a fire and a house alarm will give you a text message on your phone when there's a break in attempt and notify the police. If you have a car parked near your property, installing car security could be beneficial too. Raiders sometimes try to lure the people inside to come out by trying to steal your car. Installing car security by clicking on it in your inventory when looking at your car will rule this possibility out. It also keeps your car from being stolen until you log out or despawn the car. Now that the basics are done, you can start building your defenses. For example builds for each property you can check the construction manual. The manual will be linked in the description of the video and the forum post. The core of your defenses are barricades. They will work as cover where you can crouch behind and make sure you won't get damaged if you are hidden behind them. It's strongly advised to place two barricades against each other as demonstrated here. Having two of these set up like this makes them bulletproof. 
Always try to have the upside down barricade facing to the defender, not towards the door. This will make it easier to actually cover behind it. Also good to know that when you stand behind the barricade, approximately 20% of your body is visible instead of the whole 100%. I'll show you the difference between having one barricade and two. Here with one barricade I can damage the defender by shooting through it. With two barricades the bullet doesn't go through and damage the defender. Once you have the barricades down, you can actually start to add extra cover against it. I'd suggest placing the short chain link fence sideways the same way I put it here. You can put bookshelves too to give extra cover to stand behind. Spotlights can be added too to blind the raiders when entering. The metal fences protect the defenders from grenades being thrown behind the barricades. So that's very useful. Be sure to check the construction manual. You can't place the spotlights and bookshelves too close to each other for example. This will create hard to spot head glitches and or give unfair advantages. A good thing to do if you suspect getting raided, can be heard by hearing a crowbar, which makes a loud noise, or a more silent sound of the bobby pin, or even a bomb, can be recognized by either a song playing or a beeping sound, you could and should make a 911 call. This will notify the cops and will allow them to come as soon as possible. This is an example of what the cops see when they get an alert similar to a 911 call. But if you think that you can handle the raiders it's also heavily advised to have medical supplies on you like bandages, stim packs and splints. If you get shot you will start to bleed. If you don't bandage if time you will bleed out and die. Bandaging will stop the bleeding. Because bandaging won't heal you. You will need stim packs to make the health regeneration go faster. Splints are only used to temporarily stop you from being crippled. You get crippled if you get hit in the leg. If you wish to fix your legs you'll have to visit the hospital. To actually notice getting raided you have to be alert. Watching a loud TV with your back to the door surely won't benefit your defense. You can actually turn the TV sound down if you press F1 and go to options and change the volume. Having it at 1% is still loud enough to hear it properly. If you decide to watch the television when basing, be sure to pause it when you suspect getting raided. This to not get too distracted by it. When you're basing with other people, and they actually want to leave the property, Make sure you always have someone aiming at the door as they try to exit. If a raider is camping the front door he can gunpoint the person leaving and forcing himself into the property. If you cover him by gunpointing the door, you could possibly intervene in time. Cover me! Roger that! I'm in position! Another thing people often tend to forget is the placement of their drugs. If the cops come to your property because they heard gunshots or any other reason, you sometimes have to open the front door. When you open the front door and the cops can clearly see the drugs, they have a reason to raid you. PLPD! Okay. Uh... That's perfect. That's perfect. You should hide the drugs out of sight, preferably behind locked doors. And yes this applies for chemical tables too, if they have illegal substances shown on top that is. Sometimes a simple replacement of the chemical table or placement of a simple prop can fix all the problems. We also made a list with some extra tips that are useful to know. We will first go through the list one by one. Not all properties have the same amount of chemical table and workbench slots. Be sure to check the construction manual beforehand. Most walls are possible to shoot through. In properties like slums and projects, the floors and roofs are too. Hicktown, the cabins in the wood and scrapyard are like heaven for shooting through walls. One full rifle magazine is enough to kill everyone inside if the base is not built properly. It's not allowed to harvest drugs when a raid is started. When you hear a lock picking or bomb sound, the raid has started. Try to group up with other players. Strength in numbers. Always have medical supplies on you. 
They are relatively cheap to buy at Bazaar and will cost you less effort to craft. If you are inside your base, have friends coming in from outside notify you before they enter the building. This can save the confusion and make sure nobody gets shot by accident. Have your phone ringtone on silent. Remote bombs will make a ringtone sound play before blowing up. Having ringtones not on silent can create confusion. Changing fire mode makes sound and could give your position away. Try to change fire mode before the raid not when it just started. Running and sprinting makes sound. Crouching or walking in your property will make no sound, and will not give your position away. When Jamie is online, pray. Jamie has potato aim, don't worry. Have fun, don't get too worked up if you get raided. Raiding is part of the game, if you feel like you're being targeted, make an F6 report. That's all for today. I hope you learned something from this video. We are planning on making example build for every property in the near future. Feel free to ask questions or leave feedback. Stay safe and enjoy.